Islam, we have some questions. And, uh, you know, Brother Raphael, if you don't mind firing those off, please. Sure. All right. So does the word Kemet justify ones being able to positively identify politically as black? No, because the people, people that are demonstrating political power or constitutional government are not basing the, you know, the, the, enfor the making and enforcing of law solely on, you know, the science of, or frame of reference of Kemet, right? Um, if, if you study, first of all, you'd have to know constitutional law, right? The 1789 Constitution that we have is predicated upon an earlier Constitution known as the Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation was predicated upon an earlier Constitution than that, known as the Articles of Association. When you read all these documents, the word Kemet does not appear once. Okay? The word Egypt doesn't appear once. All right? They're not using that as a frame of reference. Now, if we look at architecturally, let's say, we go to Washington, D.C., we look at the architecture, clearly we can say, see Egyptian-based architecture in Egypt. Because that, but because that influence was, as was demonstrated architecturally, that doesn't mean they're demonstrating that in government, all right? And just because, you know, we, we have a historical connotation and connection to Kemet and, you know, you know which ones know, that, know as Egypt, that doesn't mean in the modern day within the frame of reference that we're demonstrating in now in 2017 that we can use that as an identifier, right, to qualify ourselves politically now. We have to remember, though we're holistic thinkers, a lot of these, you know, uh, you know, disciplines are set up in a fragmented sense because of the, you know, the rise of the European nations. So they think in a fragmented sense. So they present things in a fragmented manner. We, with our holistic minds, we have a tendency to try to put it all together and present it back to the European, and that's not how he learned. All right, he learned it in a fragmented sense. That's how he disseminates it. So no, it, you know, it, does, it it would not work. And it does not work, and it's not qualified or justified by calling yourself a comedic person or or black, as, even though as though that's a derivation of that you know of that word. But you know, using that to justify why you you're, you're calling yourself black because we're tied to Kemet, and does that you know can we you know use that in a political sphere? Is it, you know, as a lawyer would say, it's not a cogent argument. Okay, but uh, okay. but Rafael. All right. Next. Uh, next question is: Was Kemet ever the national political name for that landmass? No. Firstly, you know we have we have to remember you're talking about thousands of years over successive dynasties. The name for that landmass changed many many different times. You know you had uh, Tawi, you know the two lands. You know when Upper and Lower Egypt was separated, you had Tani Hesi or Tani Hesu. You know uh, you had you know you had Kemet, so on and so forth. So these are these are over different, you know, successive dynasties. In our retro, in our, in our attempt to retrofit what we've learned about Kemet in ancient times, uh, a lot of it doesn't fit. A lot of it ends up being ends up being our form of uh, romanticizing of how we want to see how it was back then. But it wasn't necessarily ideal, and it wasn't this necessarily one nation state concept. You know that you know that we had. You had, like I said, you had various different dynasties, which were ruling class families that ruled according to the ideal that they set up, right? Uh, and you know, a dynasty that ruled according to this ideal, when they were overthrown, the next dynasty that came in may have not and usually didn't honor those previous ideals. And in fact, they'd go around to all the hieroglyphs with the hammer and chisel, chisel out the previous dynasty, so the present dynasty would forget about that, so their children would have, wouldn't have to be raised under that ideal, right? So. You know, to answer the question, much of this is our, you know, our, our way of romanticizing to make, you know, uh, ancient Kemet this utopia. And a lot of times, well, it was a grand civilization, but it wasn't this utopia that we have a tendency to romanticize about. Okay, next. All right, last question is, uh, was Kemet the very first nation ever established on Earth? No. Um, historical records, even oral history comes down, um, gives, you know, older histories talking about Atlantis and a place called Mu, another place called Lemuria. These are ancient grand civilizations. Um, even if you go amongst the, the Twa people, the people called the Pygmies, they talk about a period of time when they were once a very high technological civilization, but um, because of them losing their touch with nature and their higher abilities, intuition, so on and so forth, they forsake technology and went back to a more primordial life. So all these histories lead up to the fact of showing that Kemet was not the first grand civilization. And in fact, Kemet actually shows 
almost a decline in the, the grandeur of the civilizations that preceded it um, because of various different things. Uh, you see among certain dynasties in, you know, in Kemet where um, the women wore wigs because they couldn't grow hair, you know, showing a high uh, count of radiation in the atmosphere. If you go back and read the Ebers papyrus and the various different papyri that you know that came down, you see you know the conflict. That, that conflict that they talk about between Heru or Horus and Set, his uncle Set, um, that wasn't just allegory. Some of that was actual history, and they talk about and it goes in talking about nuclear detonation and so on and so forth. Right, and there were various different cataclysms that took place that actually helped to, you know to separate the tectonic plates and create the continents as we know them because we know they were all once joined. All right, so no, Kemet was not the first, nor was it the most grand civilization that exists, but we do honor it because it is within the pedigree of our forefathers. Why the pyramids and the Sphinx are considered two of the ten wonders of, of the world that are on the charter of the Moorish Science Temple of America, and as Moorish American Muslims. We are descendants of the custodians of those ancient mysteries. So, you know, you take that in a nutshell. But again, we promote for one to study the works of the Prophet Noble Dry Ali because he's covered all of this in his grand literature. And with that, we say peace.